Good morning. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday and welcome to Holy Week as we kick off Holy Week uh, preparation, uh, as we uh, appreciate and celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, knowing full well what lays ahead that uh, ultimately everything went according to plan, which took us to Good Friday, but we know that Friday was not the end of the story. It was really just the beginning where we got to celebrate uh, the Easter resurrection. So we know what is uh, going to take place, but yet it is important that uh, each and every year we go through this process as a reminder of the depth of our God's great love for us and how far he was willing to go in order to secure our salvation. So with that being said, there's going to be many opportunities to gather together for worship uh, in the coming week. Wednesday evening, 7 p.m., we will have our Spy Wednesday evening service. Uh, there's no meals during this, uh, this week, so keep that in mind uh, because those have been completed last week. But uh, 7 p.m., we have the Spy Wednesday service, uh, and, and with that, we observe and concentrate on Judas hatching the plot in order to betray Jesus. It will be a service with communion. Monday, Thursday, when we remember the night when Jesus was betrayed and he gave us uh, his holy supper of bread and wine that, that came it is with his body and blood given and shed for us, 7 p.m., uh, that will be again another service with communion. At that service, it will be ended with the stripping of the altar, preparing us for the events of Good Friday. Good Friday service at one o'clock uh, p.m., another service with communion. Uh, and then the Tenebrae service, the service of darkness at 7 p.m. Uh, and would love to have you enjoy, uh, join us in all of those. All of those services will be different. Then, of course, next Sunday, uh, at this time, uh, the first service will just about be over. Well, well it should be over by then. 6.30, 9, 11, with uh, breakfast at about 7.30 with that. Communion will be served at all three of those services. And we hope and pray that you will join us for all of those different opportunities with that. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, reminder, no meals on Wednesday or Thursday this year. So keep that in mind. Also, want to give you an update. Our girls' 7th uh, and 8th grade basketball team has done extremely well. They, they won their first uh, couple games with that. And, and then they, they lost a heartbreaker yesterday to Hales Corners in Wisconsin. Uh, that is really one of the largest churches in our church body. They, they held strong, was very close. Unfortunately, they lost. I believe that they are tuning in at this time together as a team. So uh, congratulations, girls, with that. They will be playing the next game at 9 a.m. Uh, here this morning. So they have an early start there. They're in the bracket now where they're playing for fifth through eighth place. Uh, we are very proud of what they have done and the accomplishments that they have made throughout this season. So congratulations, girls, with that. And then, just as a reminder, uh, we are nearing the end. Next week will be the final Sunday with those surveys that we handed out with clarifying our calling. Talked about things you love about St. Paul, some things that are missing, uh, where you would see St. Paul to be in five years. And even if you are a visitor, uh, we'd love to have you fill that out. There's a question just for you. What it is, is it that has brought you uh, to join us in worship here this day. And even if you're online, please fill that out as well. We would love to hear with you. Uh, there's paper copies on the visitor information booth on that side, also online copies as well. As far as with uh, the QR code, you can zoom in with that and uh, participate with the questionnaire. So in just a moment, I'll be making my way to the back. We have a procession here this morning. Unfortunately, uh, somebody loved the palm branches so much that they took them all. We don't know where they are just yet. We, there's a few that are here today. Hopefully by nine o'clock we can get that figured out. Uh, they disappeared from Thursday uh, to this morning. And so we're, we're looking at that, but we're going to have the palm procession with those palm branches that we have. In a moment, we're gonna have the procession with the cross and the Bible. And so as we begin our opening hymn, we invite you to please rise and face the cross as it makes its way down the center aisle.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest. As we enter this holy week of our Lord's Passion, let us confess our sins to God and to one another. God of compassion, we confess to you that we have sinned against you and against our neighbors. We have been prideful. We have sought to overrule your authority as Lord of our lives. We have not listened deeply to your word. We do not deserve your kindness to us. In your abundant compassion, forgive us, Lord, for the sake of your Son, who gave his life on the cross for us. The Lord is full of compassion. He gives life. He heals the wounds caused by our sin. Therefore, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for today's readings. The Old Testament lesson comes from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from Philippians, the second chapter. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel comes from John, the twelfth chapter. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. 
The reason why the crowd went out to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Palm Sunday Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, who sent his Son to earth to be the sacrifice for our sins. I believe in God the Son, Jesus Christ, who was worshipped by his disciples, scorned by the Pharisees, and adored by the masses, who in all triumph and victory marched into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and then suffered rejection and death on Good Friday for us. I believe in God the Holy Spirit, by whose work I believe, by whose grace I am saved, by whose word I am taught, and by whose power I confess that Jesus is Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn of the day. Mercy and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning's message is taken from today's gospel lesson from John's account of the gospel, the 12th chapter, special emphasis on the 16th verse, where once again it reads, His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. This is our text, dear family and friends in Christ Jesus. Amen. Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed how quickly things can change and how often they really do? Let me give you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. April 12th, 1912, at 12 p.m., the Titanic set sail for a historic journey marked with celebration and all kinds of fanfare. Just two days later, April 14th, about 11.50 p.m., it hits an iceberg. 
By 2.20 a.m., the Titanic, the unsinkable ship, sank. How quickly things changed. Or what about December 7th, 1941 in Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor on that day, the sun came up like it had done so many times before, every day before that, really. It started out like any other day. But then by 7.55 a.m. and for the next few hours, bombs continued to rain upon Pearl Harbor. And we all know the result, how quickly things changed. What about September 11, 2001 at 7.59 a.m.? It was at that point when American Airline Flight 11 takes off from Boston's Logan Airport. And at 8.46, it crashes into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. And we all know the chaos that, that followed that crash and how the entire world was turned upside down. How quickly things changed on that day. But I'll tell you this, we do not need to dig all that deep in history books to see how quickly things change. Think for a moment about how quickly things change at a wedding. Or say, when your first child or maybe your first grandchild is born. Or maybe when you're visiting the doctor and the doctor goes on to tell you that you have cancer. It's true. In life, that there's so many things that, that, that happen and change everything. Some of them come expectantly, and, and others come totally out of the blue, where it seems as if everything changes in just a moment's notice, and things, they're never the same again. I'll tell you this, those words have never rung more true than the, what took place on this day some 2,000 years ago as Jesus was entering into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. And even though we know the story so well, even though we, we pretty much know this story as well as we know the back of our own hands, it's still pretty remarkable nonetheless, isn't it? how things change so dramatically, it, it, it's pretty remarkable that they changed in a span of one week for Jesus in seven short days. Oh, we all know that all of that, that was part of God's plan, and yet it's still hard, hard to figure how the, those shouts of Hosanna turned into cries of crucify him how the waving of palms was replaced by the cracking of the whip, how the riding on a donkey was traded for, for hanging on a cross, and how a man full of life by the end of the week lay dead in the tomb. A whirlwind does not even begin to describe the events that took place on that particular week. A whirlwind that took the 12 disciples from, from following their king into Jerusalem, riding high on Palm Sunday, celebrating every single moment, soaking it in, to being holed up for fear behind locked doors on Saturday with no clue as to what they were going to do at that particular moment. It's true, isn't it? that things in life can and do indeed oftentimes change in an instant? And when they do, how do we respond? So often we, we respond by trying to take control. We try to take control and stop the change that is taking place and end up working it out so that it will end up working out the way that we want it to. And I tell you, as we take a closer look at this passion story of Jesus, that many people were trying to do just that. Think for a moment about Jesus, G, Judas. He was trying to take control as he betrayed Jesus, thinking that that way things would, everything would fall into place exactly the way that he had thought or the way that he planned that it would. Or when Jesus was being arrested, we see that Peter stepped up and tried to take control when he drew his sword and cut the ear off of Melchus, the high priest's servant. The chief priests, they were trying to take control when they were trying to orchestrate everything that was going on so that this day, that week, would go their way. And Pilate, he tried to take control and exercise his control that he did have as Roman governor over Judea, but even he was stymied. Even he struggled with it as Herod, with, by Herod and the chief priests and the crowd. Ultimately, as we look back at this event, 
these events really, there's only one person who is in control. That one person who is always in control. The one who would drink that cup that his father gave him to drink. The one who would not defend himself with weapons or even with words. The one who would not hate those who hated him or revile those who reviled him. The one who made himself nothing and laid down his life. Oh, uh, during that time, others thought that they were taking it from him. But they didn't. He on they only did what he allowed them to do. Oh, he could have stopped all of the things that were taking place in an instant. He could have called out 12 legions of angels to stop those legions of soldiers who thought that they were in control with everything that was going on because they would have had been, not been able to have any chance whatsoever against the legions of angels. But Jesus would not do that. Instead, the Almighty allowed himself to be bound. The judge of all allowed himself to be judged. The Lord of life he allowed himself to be crucified. He controlled it all. And the thing is, as we take a closer look with the gift of perspective, we can see that even the words that he used show that he was not one who was caught in an out-of-control situation, but that he was very much in control. Remember, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. And he also said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Things in life can and, and do change in an instant, but the truth of the matter is nothing really changed that week at all. Everything that happened that week all went according to plan, and that plan that was put together in the Garden of Eden right after Adam and Eve fell into sin and the entire world was plunged into sin and, and to death. All that took place so that the, the Son of God would be able to come and do this, to do what it was that he did so that he could lay down his life for the life of the world, for your life, for my life, for everyone, so that we might have life. Here's the thing. Right now, all of you are his disciples. Just like those 12 disciples that he chose so many years ago, he also has chosen each and every one of you. You know the story. You know how all of the events that we are looking at this week, how that's all going to turn out and that celebration that is waiting for us just one week from today. But the original 12 disciples, they didn't know all that. Even though Jesus told them, they still could not understand at that particular time all that was to come. Only later, only later they would eventually be able to figure it all out. They would eventually be able to remember all of those things that Jesus had said that everything, everything went according to plan. That Jesus, he was really in control the entire time. But as I said, each and every one of you here are his disciples. And as his disciples, we know that things in life oftentimes do change in an instant. And it does happen. Think about it in your life. One wrong word spoken, one wrong action taken, that can change your entire life. A careless word, that can end a friendship. An honest mistake can end up with you losing your job. A doctor brings you the word that that, that thing that you have in the body, that in your body, that it's, it's not curable. And they're not even sure if they have a treatment to make anything better. Or somebody else makes a mistake changes everything for you in your life as well. Maybe a drunk driver or a false accusation. Maybe, maybe a sin catches up with you that you did so long ago that you thought was hidden that no one knew about it finally comes to the surface and, and it causes your entire world to be thrown into chaos. Hurt that you caused can't be undone. Maybe 
just maybe some days you feel a little bit more like Judas than, than any of the other characters in the Bible. Things in life can change in an instant just like that, and they oftentimes do. But in all reality, they did for you, didn't they? They did when you were baptized, when God's very name was watered upon your head and he claimed you to be his son. He claimed you to be his daughter and said, Father, forgive him, forgive her, for they know not what they do. He also says, you will be with me in paradise. At that moment, Jesus took you into his death and into his resurrection as well so that you then would be given life and hope and comfort and salvation. At that moment, Jesus took everything that he has and everything that he did, and he gave it to you, and he made you a promise. He said that that, that is never, ever going to change. I will not take that back. You can, you can refuse the gift that I'm giving you, Jesus says, but I will never take my promises back that I have given to you. When you need mercy, I'm going to be there to give you mercy. When you need forgiveness, I'm going to be there to give you forgiveness. When you need life, I'm going to be there to give you life. He says, I gave my life for you, and that will never, ever change. So maybe, maybe we've been going it all about it the wrong way after all. Maybe we haven't been doing it right at all, just like Judas and Peter and Pilate and the chief priests, our, our first instinct, instinct is to respond to the things that are changing around us, to, to take control, to make ourselves do something so that we can fix it and, and get everything back right on track. But Scripture tells us something different. Not sure if you caught it in today's epistle lesson. It tells us something very important. It tells us that we should make ourselves nothing. That's what St. Paul said. He said, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking on the form of a servant and being in the, made in the human likeness. He, and in that appearance, he humbled himself and he became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Here's the thing. If we do that, if we have that same attitude attitude that Jesus had, then we're going to be able to move forward in life with confidence, knowing that, yeah, it's true that things can and do indeed change in an instant. Life can bring a whirlwind of changes in a moment. But we know that the one who never changes, that he is always in control. And when we make ourselves nothing, he is the one who is in control. But to make ourselves nothing does not mean that we are to do nothing, but rather it means that we are to do as Jesus did, to love those who hate us, to bless those who revile us, to forgive those who have sinned against us, to have mercy on those who who cry out to us. And when you do those things, Jesus is in control, not you. Uh, that's, that's hard. It's not easy. Living like that it can indeed be scary at times because it's not always easy not being in control. But as disciples, we know how the story is going to turn out. You know what it is that we are going to be celebrating in this very place next Sunday. And we, you know what's going to take place beyond that because we go with Jesus because he is the one who is in control of all things. And if he is your Savior, then we need not move forward in fear but with a great deal of confidence. Because of that, everything has changed for you and nothing that will change that for you. And that is this, that you are a redeemed, baptized, forgiven child of God, and nothing can change that. So when things change in your life in an instant, as they oftentimes do, or even when they don't, remember, remember that moment when everything changed in your life for the better, when the tomb was empty, 
when the word of God was fulfilled, when the gates of heaven were opened for you as well. And so today, today we proclaim our hosannas, that is, Lord, save us, and let us do that loud and clearly because we do need him to save us. But let us go forward in this week with a great deal of confidence that we do not go alone, but he goes with us each and every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, may the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Well, as we began, thank you so much for being here. Glad that you are here, beginning your Holy Week preparation by being in church on Palm Sunday. We pray that the Lord will bless you. Pray that I'll get to see a lot of you in the coming days. And with that, not only do I thank you for your presence, but I thank you for the gifts of love that you give as you come and drop them off at the box or, or, or when you leave or you mail them in or, or drop them during the week or even if you use online giving, however it is, every single gift, every single dollar is greatly appreciated as we are in ministry together doing the work that the Lord has called us. May the Lord continue to bless you so that we can then be a blessing to so many others around us. With that, we continue with the prayer hymn, LSB 549, all hail the power of Jesus' name. rise as we now go to God in prayer. We bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus, as we gather together on this day that we call Palm, call Palm Sunday and celebrate your triumphal entry into Jerusalem, we know how quickly things can and do change. Lord, we thank you that as things change around us that we have full confidence that you are ultimately the one who is in control. Help us, O oh Lord, to look to you in faith with great confidence knowing that you will be with us and give us the assistance that we need at any time and really all time whenever we need you. And that's why we come to you in confidence and prayer, knowing that you will hear us and give us that which we need. On this day, O oh Lord, we pray a special prayer of comfort for the families of Linda Shepherd, of Rosalind Youngie, of Ar Arlene Gherkin, of Jim Small, as well as Rich Hoffer. Comfort these families in the midst of their grief Assure them of the hope of the resurrection that we celebrate and observe just next Sunday. 
Help us, O oh Lord, to see that because you lived, died, and rose again through the gift of faith, we know that we will indeed rise with you as well. And as you comfort these families in the time of their grief, we pray that you'll also be with all those who are ill or have been hospitalized. We pray that you will be with Bob Long, Bernie Dealman, Mike Huber, Summer Huber, Nick Roars, Gene Spangler, Barb Davis, Kay Beam, Ruth Scott, Jennifer Connors, Wendy Fight, Randy Gherkin, Rita Schutte, Leon St. Clair, Mark Spies, Pam Nagel, Matt Von Sagren, Cheryl Doyle, Skylar Smith, Mike Short, Ruth Small, John Exionius, Betty Hinesley, Dennis Ehlers, Logan Weiss, Jim Tunney, the Reverend Walter Marsis, Carter Neese, Janice Popke, Randy Rosebrock, Kent, uh, Kate Baumgartner, Linda Johnson, Dave McMahon, Terry Doyle, Tom Harms, Tricia Contact, Jay and Lois Hanna, Brandon DeGroff, and Adam Rosebrock. Lord, we take great comfort knowing that you are well aware of the needs of each of these individuals. That's why we place them into your hands, praying that you will grant healing to them, that you will comfort them and give them the certainty that even though some of these things made it seem like life changed in a moment, that you are indeed in control. Give them comfort and confidence that you are there with them. We also pray for our seventh and eighth grade girls basketball team uh, as they are finishing up the tournament in Fort Wayne. We thank you, O oh Lord, that they have been able to compete to the best of their ability over this past weekend. We pray that as they are wrapping up the tournament, that they will return home safely. Help them, O oh Lord, to be modest in victory and gracious in defeat, giving thanks to you for the opportunity to enjoy this weekend, uh, showing their athletic abilities. We also pray a special prayer for Miss Lydia Schroeder as she deliberates the call to serve as our next first grade teacher as she is wrestling with that desire that you have for her. Lead her and guide her and give her the wisdom of Solomon to make that decision so that she will indeed be where you want her to be. We also pray for wisdom as we uh, are nearing the end of completing the survey of clarifying our calling as a church as part of the strategic growth process with 5-2. Lead us as a congregation throughout this entire process so that we can see those opportunities that are right before us and so that we can share the gospel message and grow your church, not for us, but for you and, and for the sake of the gospel. We also thank you for those men and women who faithfully serve our nation in the military. We pray for Major Brad, Major John Campbell, Lieutenant Colonel Kyle, Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Benneke, Major Daniel Rudolph, Lieutenant Commander Tiffany Lurch, Captain Richard Snyder, Captain Brian Schlade, Chief Warrant Officer for Jeremy Went, First Sergeant Joshua Bell, Master Sergeant Benjamin Lease, Staff Sergeant Alex Zavakis, Staff Sergeant Zarin Carr, Staff Sergeant Alex Behrman, Staff Sergeant Brendan Bosselman, MMN1 Lena Lurch, Sergeant Tristan Friedhoff, Sergeant Zach Miller, MMN2 Jacob Lurch, Staff Sergeant Nate Coulter, Corporal Derek Kors, Corporal Cameron Reefers, Specialist Emma Kors, Specialist Grant Lugo, Specialist Grant Grace Hopkins, Petty Officer Camden Short, Senior Airman Taylor Baker Coulter, Senior Airman Maxwell Phillips, Airman First Class Carter Niekamp, Airman First Class Noah Schuler, Airman First Class Landon Moore, and Private Andrew Leverett. Lord, we thank you for these individuals who put their lives on the line for you. Protect them so that they may continue to preserve the freedoms that we as a nation enjoy. All these things, O oh Lord, we ask in your most precious name as we now together pray that prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord vindicates his people through Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We conclude our service here this morning by joining our voices in singing LSB 441, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.